YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday, December 13th, Vlogmas Day. I don't know. This morning, there was a peep of sunshine in the blue sky in the distance for the first time in months. It is never sunny in Pennsylvania. But today, this morning, it was for a brief moment, and it's not right now, but that's okay. Still gonna be a great day. <laughs> for those of you who are new here, my name is Allie. I'm a hunter, an angler, a public lands advocate, and lover of all things outdoors. And here on my channel, I share my adventures. So subscribe. I can't believe that we are this far into Vlogmas. It's insane. I have been posting a video every single day since December 1st and I will continue to do so until December 25th, and then Vlogmas will be complete. It's nuts. Anyways, I'm starting off this morning with a big old bowl of oatmeal that's going to fuel a workout. So I'm gonna work on my computer, crunch down some food, and then we are gonna work out, and it's gonna feel great. It's gonna feel great. Welcome to voiceover alley for the workout portion of this video. So this will be super quick like the last time, but again, health and fitness is part of my life. And although I don't do videos specifically on my workouts and my nutrition, etc., this is part of my life. So I wanted to include it. So I started this workout off with a good warm up. I pick random movements just to get my body moving, get it warm, get things feeling good and flowing. And then I started my circuit. So I did one big circuit and just repeated these movements as many rounds as I could. So that started with a reverse lunge jump. I've been incorporating more explosive movements into my workouts. Something that I used to do a lot in high school when I was an athlete and have been totally neglecting for years. So that was number one in the circuit. Second was a squat with a kettlebell. Now this kettlebell is a 12 kilogram kettlebell, which converts to about 24 pounds. Next, I went down to the flow and I did a little ab circuit. So I don't know what you would call this first movement, but basically your abs are contracted the entire time. And then I did what I call a roll up. You roll down nice and slow, contracting your abs and then roll back up and repeat, repeat, repeat. Then I went into some simple push-ups. I did these on my knees because I was doing a rep range of 10. And honestly, my chest is probably my weakest muscle. And last but not least, I did some reverse lunges holding two kettlebells. Whenever I'm working out in a gym, I like to move more weight. I don't lift extremely heavy. I like to keep it intense, but I'm not trying to break my body. I don't want any injuries. But here at camp, this is as heavy as I can get. So I held both of those kettlebells, which equals around 50 pounds total, and did some reverse lunges for the finisher. <laughs> That's a wrap. Smoothie time. Oh. Oh, oh no, oh no, oh no. Damn it. Here we have banana, mango, spinach, chia seeds, almond milk, and vanilla protein powder. <gasps> So delicious, favorite, one of my favorite smoothies. Mm. You saw me make this in a previous vlog, Miss Vlog. All right, it is time to get ready to hunt. Tonight, I am walking, walking, and walking. So, because of that, I'm bringing my pack. This is my pack that I would use when I'm elk hunting or mule deer hunting, etc. because if I kill something or if Nick kills something way back in, it's going to be too far to drag it out. We are fortunate enough to be hunting in a spot where you can hike far enough that a you know two mile drag is too far and it's just easier and more comfortable to just cut it up, throw it in your pack and hike it out, which is cool. This should be a fun one. 
basically, I feel like I've been hunting in the same bubble and I haven't seen any bucks since archery season. So figure I gotta, you know, just gotta put the miles on if I wanna find a buck. And at this point I only have a buck tag, so it's my only option. That's what I'm doing. Wow. Nice rub. Holy crap. Wow. All right, it's time to get my creep on. I'm just slowly creeping my way. So we get to a nice vantage point. I've got a pretty good sweat going right now. I'm so glad I didn't wear my jacket. So this hunt ended up being pretty special because Nick's uncle came along with us. And a lot of you ask how I got into hunting and I always give Nick the credit. He's the one who brought me into the woods, but ultimately it was his uncle who introduced him to it. So I really have to thank him as being the one who started this all and who introduced us to this outside world, the natural world, you know? So this was the first hunt that the three of us have gone on together. We've been hunting before, but never together like this. So although not much happened, it was an absolute beautiful evening, a beautiful hike, and a pretty cool moment overall. Look at how covered in snow I am already. That's insane. All right, let me give you the lowdown. I'm going out for my final rifle hunt of the season. There may be more archery to come, but tonight's a big night because it's my last chance to shoot a buck with a rifle. So the weather has been cuckoo crazy today. This morning, it was raining buckets. And I swear, three inches of rain messed up. That's dramatic, but it rained a lot. And midway through the day today, temperatures switched and it turned into snow. It's been doing this ever since. I'm headed out now. I have a particular spot that I'm walking to that I'm going to sit down. It's on top of a thicket between some laurel, you know, my normal jam for rifle hunting. So off we go. I'm walking into the snow. It's blowing in my face, which is a good thing, because that means the wind is blowing in my face, which is what you want. You want the wind blowing from the animal you're pursuing to you, because it's the if it's the other way around, they're gonna smell you and they're gonna take off. So keep that wind in your face. There was just a doe. Right there. I was expecting them to walk in front of me here. I don't have any more doe tags, otherwise I would have shot that doe. Do I see another deer? Hold on. So she came in like behind me and then got downwind of me. And so because of that, I think I'm gonna move. Because if a buck does come in, he will probably take a similar path. On another note, I think because of all the heavy, wet snow, there are so many sticks falling from the trees. I've seen two or three of them. Like I've actually watched them fall from the tree. Normally you just hear them, but crazy.
So the thicket that I was just sitting on is just beyond the horizon mark right there. This is obviously a much better vantage point. So I climbed up this little hill, which maybe you can tell, maybe you can't. Um, but I climbed up, and now I'm looking down over everything. That's Mountain Laurel. I'm assuming that the deer will either come out of that thicket or out of this Mountain Laurel. That doe came out of the Mountain Laurel behind me and got downwind of me. So where I'm sitting at right now, if they do come out of the Laurel, I'm hoping they'll just come out to my left. Um, I kind of blocked myself off to the right. The little hill that I'm sitting on kind of swoops around, so I can't really see off to my right anyway. So I'm just focusing in front of me and all the way to my left. Again, hoping that something will pop out of the laurel or out of the thicket, or we'll just be traveling through this sort of bench of a travel corridor, like kind of like that doe was about to be doing before she sniffed me and got mad. So I feel, I feel much better about sitting up here like this. I wanted to be really close to the thicket because if something is walking through it, I won't be able to see it from here. But if they pop out of it, I'll be able to see them. So I think it's still a good plan. Um, it's a good sign that I even saw a doe already and it's still pretty early. So we'll see. three shots now. They all sound pretty close. 